Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Buerter. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So welcome to our celebration today, a celebration of God's love. I want to especially welcome our St. Martin's family. I know that uh, you're hearing me every week, but it's also good to see me. And so I am happy to be here with you as we celebrate tonight. We give God thanks for all the grace that he's given us for love, for peace, for joy. But also we call to mind the fact that we haven't always been people who've said yes to God. There are times when we have chosen, sometimes freely, to do what is wrong. So we ask the Lord to forgive us. We came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest, Christ. and on glory earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore, adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts comes to the waters, and he who has no money Come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, merciful love for David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. You, you open, open your, your hands, hand, Lord, and, and you satisfy us. us. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy, how good is the Lord to all! 
compassionate to all his creatures. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand, Lord, and you satisfy us. The Lord is just in all his ways, and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him, who call on him in truth. You You open open your hands, Lord, and and you satisfy us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sweat? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, to you, o Lord. At that time, when Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place apart. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. As he went ashore, He saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and now the day is over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. And taking up the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. Then they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah 
poses a challenging question to us today. He asks us, why do you spend your money on what is not bread? Wages for what fails to satisfy. He points us towards a very human reality that sometimes we make bad choices. We choose things which do not bring us to a a place of life or, or happiness. Here, the prophet is merely echoing the sentiments of the writer of Deuteronomy, who in verse 15 of the 30th chapter says, See, I set before you today life and goodness, death and evil. Choose wisely. This grand cosmic language is unsettling for us. Because usually we don't see ourselves making those kinds of decisions. Or rather, we do not see the significance of the decisions that we do make. How often do we truly choose? Do we appreciate the significance of our choices? I sometimes think that we go through a lot of life on autopilot. We do what we've always done because we've always done it, or because those around us are doing the same things. We develop habits, patterns of behavior, and of thinking. We do things, we make choices without consciously reflecting on them. Instead of actively choosing for ourselves, we allow life to make those choices for us. In the days of apartheid, how often did us white people stop and ask ourselves, is this right? Most of the time, we didn't. We just went along with the system because it was what we knew, because it had always been done like that. We didn't realize that not doing something about it was actually making a choice. Let's take another example, gender-based violence. Boys aren't born believing that men are superior to women or that it's okay to beat their partner or their children. They learn that from their culture They learn that from what they see and experience in their homes and in society. Because our boys grow up swimming in a patriarchal sea and breathing in patriarchal air, they don't question whether it's right or not. We can also be desensitized to the corruption of our society. According to research done by Transparency International and Corruption Watch, South Africa is the 70th most corrupt country in the world out of 180. Individually, we might despise corruption. We hate how it undermines our democracy. We hate how it makes the plight of the poor in our country even worse. How often have we paid a bribe to a traffic officer to get out of a fine? Hair officer, such a hot day. Why don't you take 200 rand and buy yourself a cold drink? You deserve it. We say to ourselves, everybody does it, so it must be okay. These three examples show us that often we do not choose wisely. Because we do not actively, consciously make a choice. Because we do not actively make a choice, that choice, we do not appreciate its significance. Do we realize that gossiping is choosing death? Do we realize that paying a bribe or accepting one is choosing death? 
Do we realize that saying a kind and encouraging word to someone in need of comfort is choosing life? Do we realize that choosing to be patient in bumper-to-bumper traffic instead of yelling at every taxi that passes us by in the emergency lane is choosing goodness and life? The prophet Isaiah posed that question, why spend your money for what is not bread, wages for what fails to satisfy? He concludes with an invitation. Come to me that you may have life. Our choices, no matter how big or how small, are significant. Because in big or small ways, we are choosing to become more like Christ or less like Christ. In the gospel today, we hear of the feeding of the 5,000 men, seemingly an impossible task, and all they have is five loaves and two fish. Someone in that crowd made a choice to bring what they had to share it with Jesus. John's Gospel, which uh, reports that same event, we told that it was a boy, little more than a child, who brings and offers these gifts to Jesus. He could have chosen to do what most hungry boys would do, take his food to a quiet and private place and satisfy his hunger. Instead, He chose to be life-giving. He made a choice to be generous, to give to the Lord the gifts that he had, so that the Lord could bless them. That's what Jesus did. He blessed these gifts. From this generous impulse, the choice which this young boy made, life, abundant life, was present there on that hillside. We don't always realize that the little choices we make to be kind or generous or affirming or honest is our way of choosing life and goodness, our way of choosing to be more Christ-like in our own lives. I do not know what choices you will face today or in the weeks ahead, but I want you to know that those choices are important. I hope that you will reflect on them and that you will actively make your choices rather than just allowing life to make them for you. Choose wisely. Choose life. And choose goodness. And now, brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Father Almighty. Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We rely upon God's generous love to sustain us and bring good out of all of the choices that we make in our life. We now turn to God in our need as we pray. For all those who are searching for meaning, that God will guide their search, grant healing to those who are wounded, lead them to a new understanding, and help them encounter a community where the gospel is lived. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For wisdom, that we may be able to resist the allure of advertisements that offer easy and quick solutions to life's problems and invite the Holy Spirit to lead us into a deeper experience of God's providence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are working to defeat the coronavirus, that God will give strength to all health workers, insight to those searching treatments and cures, and patience to all who face daily challenges because of the disease. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are grieving the death of a loved one, that God will comfort them, ease their pain, give them the strength to face each day and fill their hearts with peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. I invite you now to the silence of your own heart. Make your own prayers to the Lord. What is it that this day we ask from God? Lord God, you search our hearts and you know us. You know our deepest desires and our greatest needs. Hear our prayers today, those that we have spoken out loud, and those that we've prayed in our hearts, for we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. mingling of this water and wine, where we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Bless and be God forever. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Almighty God, graciously sanctify these gifts, and as you accept our offerings, this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you never stop calling us to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and you call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. You have never turned away from us, though time and time again we have broken your covenant. You've bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope. In Christ Jesus, and the desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we praise the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Lord, we pray, look upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom we have all become, your sons and your daughters. Indeed, though once we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, gave himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms are outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his friends. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Knowing he was to reconcile all things in himself by the blood of his cross, he took the cup, and giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this all of you, drink from it. 
this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and we look forward to his coming. We offer you, our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one cup, they be gathered into the one body of Christ, healed of every division. Keep us always in communion of heart and mind, together with Francis our Pope, with Buti Tlachale our Bishop, Dan Kanzake his assistant, and all the bishops. Help us work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when at last we stand before you saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the blessed virgin mary mother of god saint joseph our husband with the apostles and the martyrs and with all the saints and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we commend now to your mercy then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Lord. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God. You take away the sins of the world, and bless us. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for us. Lord, 
So, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter into my life, life, but, but only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, accompany with constant protection those renewed by these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.